Hello, uh, my name is Marie and welcome back to our channel. We're um, here with Faithless Faith and today I'm going to be interviewing a good friend of ours, Elisa Quintana. And um, let me tell you how we met. We actually met in 1999 at Christ for the Nations. That's when we went to the um, like preview night for students. And so they had all, this, uh, all the students that were thinking of coming to go to the front. And so we went to the front and Lewis and Elisa prayed over us. And um, just that God would give us wisdom and, you know, make the right decision. And we did end up going to Christ for the Nations in the year 2000. And then we met, we saw them again, and we just started to become friends. And um, I, uh, I, I love this couple because of their heart for people and their heart to see the best in people. I, um, I'm going to tell you a quick story, another story, um, because they, they, they were here in Dallas and they moved to Delma. And, but one time they came back and they were with a friend and we, we met them at Spring Creek. I don't know if you remember this, but I can remember this. And um, it was when me and Armando, we were, um, you know our testimony, how we had um, had a lot of issues and trouble in our marriage. And um, they thank the Lord that, um, you know, it, it, by his grace and his mercy and just that he committed, we're here, we're here together. And I remember we were meeting them and me and Armando, I know I could speak for myself, we were just, just so broken, and so, I mean, we love seeing friends, but they, I remember you guys speaking life into us, and saying, you know, when we thought, you know, let's just throw in the towel, let's just forget, you know, teaching, and trying to help people, let's just, you know, go to church somewhere, sit in the back, and just, you know, and, and I remember, I remember exactly where we were sitting and in what booth, and I remember you guys were talking, and I remember I just felt like teary-eyed, and I'm like, I'm here in this green creek, and, um, <laughs> but that's who they are, they are encouragers, they're lovers of people, and so, um, I, uh, I mean, I'll never forget that, and um, there's a quote that I like to start with all these interviews, and this is the one that I, I agree with, Lisa, um, it says this, the best kind of people are the ones that come into your life and make you see the sun where you once stuck out. The people that believe in you so much that you start to believe in you too. The people that love you simply for being you, the ones in a lifetime kind of people. And when I read that, I was like, that's her and that's her and her husband. Um, because they're, they're once in a lifetime to me. They're always speaking life, not just to us, but um we see it and in, in just your lifelong friends that you have and um but we see it firsthand in our lives and my first question um so they're pastors of new hope family church i don't know if i said that yes. but you can see them live on um, facebook on wednesday and you can really see their heart for people it's awesome um they're doing they also have a uh, youtube on sundays so they stream that live um so you could see them um on youtube as well and my first question I want to ask you, Lisa, is how has Christ made a difference in your life? Um, well, first, I want to say thank you, Maria, for all the kind words. I just I want to tell everybody, too, that we, we love Armando and Maria, and they are one of the most genuine couples that we know. And we never thought that praying for you all on that, that campus there at Christ the Nations would lead to, uh, you know, a lifelong friendship. But I am so thankful to the Lord that that we are always going to be connected no matter where we live and we love you and your family. So I just have to say that before I get started, <laughs> I knew I was going to, I told myself I probably need to bring some tissue, but I didn't bring any tissue. <laughs> you make me cry already. So, okay. So how has Christ made a difference in my life? Mm -hmm. Well, I really don't know my life without Christ, meaning I was raised in a Christian home and I, came to know the Lord at a very young age. I don't know how old I was. I don't remember, but I was very young. And um, I think the biggest thing that Christ has done for me as far as a difference in my life is showing me how to uh, get to know the Holy Spirit more. He's the one that, you know, lives with us, lives in us. And so I think just getting to know the Holy Spirit more has helped me through several things in my life. Um, He's made a difference in my life by giving me strength. I think during the hard times in life where I didn't think I wanted to go on, you know, in the situation I was in. And 
and also perseverance as well, you know, not giving up and not throwing in the towel and not, you know, thinking that God's not with me. It was just a time of persevering through the hard times. And um, I think another big thing would be God has made a difference in my life by showing me how to forgive others as well. Um, Cause sometimes that's very, very difficult depending on the situation. And um, he just, God just always been there. He's always there no matter what I've been going through. And whenever I would call out to him and just talk to him, I would, I would know he was hearing me. I would know he was listening to me, whether it was, you know, reading the Bible and all of a sudden the scripture is just answering my question, you know, and, or a worship song I hear. Um, it just been, I've been very blessed. I, I know I've been very blessed to be raised in a Christian home and, um, it just, I think knowing the Holy Spirit and him showing me how to get through things in life has made the biggest, biggest difference in my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, that leads to the second question because um, part of the quote was, um, he, it, it said, part of the quote said, the people that believe me so much that you start to believe me too. And I like to what you said because um, you said the Holy Spirit has helped you to forgive because, you know, just in a Christian family, just like in a regular family, you know, people hurt one another, just, you know, just like cousins could hurt one another, or, you know, sisters, brothers, we hurt one another, in the body of Christ, we hurt each other, and, um, but what I see, and what I, I, I just love is that you guys continue to see the best, and so my question is, how do you um, continually see the best in people, even though you've been hurt? <laughs> That's very difficult to do. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge to do that, um, but it is possible. Um, I think for myself, the way I would see the best in people, even though maybe they've hurt me or you know, I'm going through a situation with them, I think the bottom line for me is, you know, I know the grace and the mercy God has shown me. I know that I have fallen short and I'm still learning in a lot of different areas in my life as, um, as I'm, you know, going through my life. Um, but I think just that reminder and the Holy Spirit does remind me that God showed me forgiveness, grace, mercy, even though I've made mistakes, you know, and he knows the ones I'm going to make tomorrow. But even so through that, his love and his, um, his view of me is through Christ. It's through the blood of Christ. And so, you know, that's, that's a real, like, a, it's like a mirror in front of me, actually, where if I want to, if I want God to do that for me, I need to show that to other people. And sometimes it's difficult, more difficult than others, but I always go back to God's forgiven me. God sees the best in me. He knows my humanness. He knows my shortcomings. And he will never stop loving me and he will never stop working with me. So if I want that, if I want the Lord to continue that with me, then I have to in turn, you know, show others the same grace and mercy and forgiveness. And it is possible. And sometimes that, you know, that takes time to see the best in people through the hurt, but it's, it's definitely possible. The Holy Spirit can help us do all of that and show others, you know, true love and God's love. So, yeah. Amen. That's so true. I am. Um, I like what you said too, because it does take time. And because um, sometimes you feel, I am. Um, I remember um, this past um, Easter season, Passover season, we always watch the Passion of Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, I was sitting there and as Jesus was, was whipped on the front and the back, and then he couldn't even get up and he was um, being dragged and then they put him on the cross and then one of the things he cried out was father forgive them for they know not what they do and I just broke me at least that because I was sitting there and I felt just like you said you feel the Holy Spirit say you have for me unforgiveness still in your heart with people and um and it broke me because I was like Lord it happened so long ago and so you know it's like I thought you know I've forgiven and and it just is there still. And um, and that night, I just got on my, my knees and just prayed because I just, like you say, it's like you see people through God's eyes and he loves them. And he, just as much as he's forgiven me and given me other, another chance. And, and, you know, it's like, 
how much more should I do that for, for my brothers and sisters in Christ? Wow. So um, it does take time. And, yeah. um, but like you said, it is possible. You know, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And it, he'll, help, he'll help us. To right. Forgive. Right. And another thing on that really quick, Maria, is, um, you know, with past hurts and things from people, you know, people that you care about and people that you love, you, you know how you said that you, you thought, you know, you forgave them. Lord, I thought, you know, I forgave them. But, we, you know, we have a memory. And sometimes those memories brings back the emotional pain. Uh, maybe not to the extent that it was when we first were hurt. Uh, but the enemy is always there trying to remind us of, you know, what happened or what they said or what they did. And I believe in my heart as whenever those thoughts come and they're going to come because the enemy wants us discouraged all the time. But whenever they do come, I believe that as long as we, you know, remind ourselves and remind the enemy, I chose to forgive them. I chose, you know, and I, I'm, I'm choosing again to forgive them and choose to leave it in God's hands. You know, it's sometimes it's, it's, it's a constant doing over and over you know, because the enemy does bring some of those things in the past back to our memory. But, you know, I believe we have forgiven them. It's just sometimes the memory comes back and we feel it a little bit again. But we'll just keep our remi reminding ourselves, no, I chose to forgive them. Mm -hmm. You know, just like God forgive me, I'm choosing to forgive them. And, you know, pretty soon I believe that those frequent times will get farther and farther and farther apart to where, you know, you won't ever feel that hurt again. So... Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Thank you. I um, wanted to ask you also, um, this question is, um, how do you, um, you know, being a, a minister and a mother and a wife and everything that you are, how, how do you put God first? How do you, how do you just juggle life? You know, everything that you're doing, how, um, how do you do, how do you do it? I think that's a challenge for all of us, honestly. I, I, you know, you and Armando and, you know, all these other, you know, not just lead pastors, but, you know, people in the churches that have their own, they have work and they've had their family and you know, their marriage and then they help in the church and volunteer their time. And it is a challenge. It, it really is. Um, I honestly, there's a time I do either early in the morning or late at night. I just try to be by myself. Uh, when my husband and kids go to school um, right now I'm not working outside the home so I have I do have I think a little bit of an advantage just to be able to stay home mm -hmm. and not go outside to go to work but I it's either early in the morning or late before I go to bed honestly to just be by myself and um, you know get to read the word a little bit and meditate and I'll put some worship on um, but it is a big big challenge uh, for sure and then too, I don't, I'm, and I'm sure you do this too, Maria, where you don't, you know, you just don't talk to the Lord and pray and then you're out and then you go do your daily things. It's a, he's constantly on my mind. He's constantly, you know, when I'm doing the dishes or running an errand, I mean, God's always on our mind and I'm always, you know, constantly talking to him or, you know, I, I'll think of a worship song and just start singing it because the words in the song are exactly how I'm feeling at that moment. So you know, it's, it's just an all day, every day, um, as far as him on my mind and I'm talking to him. And then sometimes he'll, I feel like the Holy Spirit tell me something and I thought, oh yeah, of course, you know, and it's almost like an ongoing conversation, but as far as specific, just alone, not do anything and focus, it would be more so in the morning when I've got time to myself or late, late in the, in the evening. So I think we just have to prioritize it. You just have to do it. You just have to set that appointment time. I heard, uh, I remember one lady in our church, she said, you know, make it like you have an appointment. You know, if you go out of your house and you drive to like the doctors or the dentist, you have to be there on time. So make an appointment, you know, get your cup of coffee, grab your word and just make that appointment and be there. And it was so true. You know, if you have an appointment outside the home, you're going to make sure you're there. And so if we do that, for the most uh, out of anyone for the Lord, then we will make time. If we want to know him and want to get to know him more, we will make that time. So it's just prioritizing, I think. And um, I'm working on everything we've talked about today. I'm still working on all of it. I'm not 
perfected any of it by any means, but um, I think God knows all of our hearts and he, he sees the effort and he knows that we love him and we're really making the effort to know him more in a deeper way. So we just got to do it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Just make it, make it, make a decision. I love that because I, we, I do the same thing either early morning or night, um, where I just kind of concentrate and it's, it's throughout the day, you know, you're, you're talking to the Lord and thinking mm -hmm. about him, but just where you sit down and you open his word or you journal mm -hmm. or you do. And, um, and I love too, because God meets us there too, because there's a drawing. I mean, at first, you know, you may be, you know, thinking, well, you know, I can't do these appointments, but you know, as you start making those appointments and you start keeping those appointments, me and Elisa could testify. It's like God draws you. It's like you read something in the word and you're like, I was just going through that. And it's just like, you want to get there again, mm -hmm. but it is consistency. It is priority. It's not just, you know, reading your Bible on Sunday when the pastor's preaching and then forgetting about it, you know, Monday through Saturday. Um, yeah. He loves us and he wants to talk to us, and, you know, and it's a drawing. Um, yeah. You know, COVID-19, Elisa, um, has shut uh, the world down. I never, I was talking, because um, the boys are school age, and so they're, um, we're doing online school, homeschooling, working from home, and um, today we need to go get some paper for the printer. So we went for lunch, and, you know, everybody was wearing masks, and, oh, yeah. and I told Nathan, I told him, son, I never in my life that would I think that we would live this way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he said, yeah, mom, I, I never either. And so my last question, Elisa, is um, this. Um, what do you think God is saying to us in the season that we're in? Mm. That's a good, a good question. <laughs> um, well, as far as I think what God is speaking to us, I mean, as a church as a whole, if, if I can answer that part first, it would be get ready, <laughs> really get ready. I believe that right now at this time, there are more people searching for God than ever before because they're in need. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're either unfortunately sick with the virus or, you know, maybe they've lost their jobs. Maybe they've been laid off. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe they can't pay for some bills now because of that. So I truly believe that there are so many people looking for God right now, honestly, because they're in a desperate situation. So whenever we are able to join again, physically in person at church, there's, I believe there's going to be more people going and more people searching than ever before. And, uh, I think that whatever the enemy meant for harm, that God's totally turning it around for the good. And, uh, it's going to bring in more souls. And I just read the other day when, uh, Joseph, you know, he was sold by his brothers, but when they came back asking him for, for food and they didn't know who he was, he tells them, whatever, you know, you meant for this for harm, but God's turning it for good and in the saving of many lives. And I really believe that right now that many lives will be saved because of what the enemy tried, you know, has been trying to do. Um, so that's just how I feel as a whole, you know, the body of Christ as a whole, um, but what God's speaking to me personally is uh, basically just be still and just learn more from him. And also he's taking away my excuses actually for maybe not doing things that he's asked me to do mm -hmm. uh, or maybe not completing things that I've started. And yeah, I just really think he's taking away all my excuses, the excuse of I don't have enough time or I wish I had more time. To me, I think he's saying, well, hello, now you have time. <laughs> you know, now you have all this time yeah. and you don't have an excuse anymore to use that. And and yeah, I just, okay, now I'm, I'm home. We're all home and for the most part. And now what am I going to do? Am I going to really buckle down and complete and finish what I've started in different areas or am I not going to so that's one of the big big things you know that I feel he's speaking to me because sometimes we feel like we have total control of our lives to a certain degree we we have control but ultimate control belongs to the Lord and even through this whole craziness of the this global pandemic going on he has all things in control and so that's another thing you know, Elisa, you thought you were in control, you know, no, you're not in control, you know, <laughs> even of what you think. And um, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that, 
you know, this is nothing new to him. He has everything in, con in control. And I think I just have to uh, focus on him, be still, don't make any more excuses and just do what I know he's asking me to do personally and my family and at church, you know, with the, with our church congregation. So yeah, I don't, I don't have any more excuses. So yeah. I like um, the two things you said is uh, where Joseph, and I forgot about that until you said where Joseph did say the saving of many lives. And the yeah. second thing is no more excuses. So I want to talk to you that are listening, me and Elisa, um, that you're not listening just to listen. It wasn't just happenstance that you got this, you know, this YouTube or this on Facebook is that God is calling you and he wants you to have a relationship with you. And, and it's time to stop the excuses. It's time to stop and say, okay, you know, when the kids grow up or, you know, once I get established in my career, once I, you know, whatever the excuse is, it's time to stop because he's coming for us and he, he wants you to be part of his family. And, and it's a drawing. There's, God is drawing you and he wants you to listen, have ears to hear. And, and what you do, all you do is you pray. You say, Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And, and I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. And, and confess that to the Lord. And then when all this is over, get into a local body. Right now, like Lewis and Elisa, they're online. Right now, you have time on Sunday, wherever you're, you're located, to look and search to see what churches are are open and, and, and preaching the gospel and see where you want to visit because you need to be part of a community just like I need a Lisa and, a, uh, and Lewis, they, they're from, they need us too we, we're, we're iron that sharpens iron it's not you know when I needed encouragement God did bring me encouragement through his word but he also brings encouragement through a woman named Elisa and he brings encouragement through, through his body and so I just encourage you to like, like Elisa said, that the saving of, of many lives, stop, stop with the excuses. It is time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to, to live for him wholeheartedly, not one foot in the world and one foot out. Not, you know, how far can I, can I, can I live and still, you know, God wants it all. And he wants us to live fully. And he wants us where we, when he comes for us, the Bible says that we won't be without shame. I don't want to be in shame. I don't want to be in shame for the way that I'm living, my unbelief and my um, walking in the flesh and walking in, not after him. So um, that's our heart. And that's why we're doing these videos because every day faith, like Elisa said, she grew up in a, fa a family, a Christian home. But through that, she's still learning how to be part, of, you know, hearing the Holy Spirit and how he's helping her every day. And um I thank you for joining. And um, Elisa, did you have any final words? Um, and then after, can you pray for us and everyone who's listening? Sure, sure. Well, final words are God is real. Yes. He, is, he is real and he loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us. And he wants definitely a relationship with all of us. And uh, that's what I would love for everybody to realize and to know that he's real he loves you and he wants a relationship with you. So, um, but yeah, I'll pray for everybody right now before we go. So Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are real and you made yourself real to us in many, many ways in the past and the present time, Lord God. We just want to show you, Lord, that we do love you back in return. We just thank you, Lord, for all the things you have done for us. And most of all, just for being a good God. You are a good God, Lord. You are the one true God. And I just ask, Lord, that if anybody is watching this and they've ever doubted you, Lord God, I pray by your Holy Spirit that you would make yourself real to them, that they would know you are the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that you know their need, you know their name, you know uh, when they were born, you know the plans that you have for them, and you are a God of love and forgiveness, and you are a God of second chances. And I just thank you for all that you have done for us and who you are to us, Father. And I just pray that your will would be done in our lives individually, that your will would be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, and we just thank you. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you for watching, and um, we'll talk to you all soon. God bless you guys.